Hello, hello. Um, so first announcement about, uh, about the time. So we are going to make around 15 minutes presentation and leave five minutes for the uh, Q&A, okay? Uh, so let's get started. So first, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Eric. I'm the robotics manager at Meta. So today, so uh, Avinash, Shashank, and I, we are going to introduce um, our journey on the data center automation from Meta, Google, and Microsoft, and also share our willingness to collaborate with the broader in industry to accelerate this new but um, very fast growing uh, domain. <coughs> Next page. Okay. So as our data center continues scale to meet the rapidly increasing demand, we are also facing rising complexity and challenges, so in the real world operation. The growing number of device, servers, racks, and applications require us to manage this uh, enormous amount of capacity with much higher uh, efficiency, uh, with much less uh, safety incidents as compared to before. And also, of course, so we need to manage it, uh, manage it with a much lower uh, cost structure over time. In order to resolve these uh, challenges, so we jointly develop the uh, uh, DC automation charter, and uh, with the objective, we want to work with everyone here, with the broader industry players, and also the uh, suppliers, right, to form a, a joint force to help the industry better understand what are the problems we are facing in the DC uh, operation and automation, and also to establish a common standard which will really helping us right, to advance the uh, DC automation technology and also uh, working together with the suppliers to make our solution uh, more effective, uh, lower cost, right, so easy to scale, and also more friendly so to our data center uh, facilities. Uh, we defined a few work streams so to collaborate with the industry. Uh, monitoring includes asset tracking, so environmental monitoring, and so on. Uh, material movements, so we move racks, servers, uh, spare parts. Uh, media management, so uh, data bearing device, we need to match them, auditing, sanitization, parts harv harvesting, and also recycling. Uh, uh, manipulation is a new segment, so robot, robot needs to uh, interact with the physical device right, in an effective manner, which includes uh, server repairs, power shelf swaps, uh, cable management, and so on. These automation work streams uh, raise pretty high standard for the uh, technologies, we are putting cutting edge technology capabilities so into our uh, practices and use cases. Um, for example, so monitoring uh, requires the uh, uh, autonomous sensing platform. Material movements will need a new payload design, right? Also need the compatibility, for example, between ORV2, ORV3 racks. So media management is very like data sensitive, right? We need to uh, manage the data and device in a more effective way, and we also need to uh, be compliant with various of the uh, industry standards. So finally, manipulation is a high-tech uh, end, right? So uh, uh, for the uh, robot arm to interact with the racks, with the uh, uh, pass repair, etc., so which is pretty complex. Um, let's start with some real uh, examples. Let's share what we do, right, in the three companies about uh, our preliminary research and also applications. So to uh, bring ideas to the industry and also uh, seek for your collaboration, right, to join us. So in order to find the common solution, more standard solution, right, to accelerate. So these automation domains. Let's start with the uh, material movement. Um, rackets becoming more complex and heavier year over year. So what we see is in a traditional operation, so even in our booths, right, so we have uh, AGV set up in the booths, I hear from the industry, hey, we are still uh, pushing and like setting up racks, so in a manual way, so which brings a lot of safety concerns and also brings a lot of uh, concerns on the operational efficiency. Uh, Meta has launched the AGV solution, the automated guided vehicle, to automate the last mile of the rack delivery so we should really simplify our process. Today, the operation is like in this way. We prepare the racks, AGV will automatically move the racks from point A to point B over long distance, then we install the rack. With this simplified process, we see a boosting of operational efficiency. So in the peak day, we have seen the system is bringing us three times to four times more throughput, so in that day, which really save our time 
enable us to um, bring up the new capacity much sooner, and also helping us to manage the uh, uh, decommissioning so with much less time. <coughs> um, uh, so through a joint efforts, so from uh, our engineering team, so our our uh, operational team, and also with our suppliers, they are here today. So we have been making the system compatible, so uh, uh, both to ORV2 and ORV3 racks. So we also uh, enhance a lot of safety features, protections. Uh, the system is compliant with the industry standard, including uh, NCB56 uh, and also UL583. Though we are still facing challenges. For example, every data center space is different. Right, some uh, data centers still have a uh, pretty tight space, narrow doors, narrow co corridors. Uh, in those space, we see when the system is making a sharp turn, so it's actually having less safety margins. Sometimes we raise the requirements, which need a building retrofits or system retrofits. Uh, the other one, so rack continue evolve their design from ORV2 to ORV3. In the future, we're going to have MCR rack, we're going to have liquid, uh, li liquid cooling rack, right, and with more protrusions, so with more complex the AI uh, feature, so which is adding complexity for lifting and transporting the rack. Uh, last but not the least, every company is applying to a different compliance and safety standards, right, which is really adding difficulty to ourselves and also to the suppliers, so to scale the solution. This is why we're standing here, we want to work with the broader OCP uh, community, right? We, we're working with rec designers, building designers, right? Experts in the compliance and also safety uh, and the security matter. So we can use the joint force to make our designs more friendly to each other, right? Through this joint force, continue to evolve our designs as a data center system, right? So uh, continue to improve the automation and also efficiency level in the overall data center system. Um, let me take a, a quick pause here. So I really want to bring a big thank you so to my team. So <laughs> we have a Meta Robotics team, we have Meta PMs, we have Meta Product Managers, we have our uh, directors and the VPs, uh, they are here, and we have peers. So um, I want to say big thank you. So thank you for all the contributions uh, to enable the DC automation at Meta and also helping us to expand to the industry, which is really making a, uh, a difference, right? Which is challenging ourselves to continue to grow, and also uh, everyone here, so we are going to become one of the best players in this world. I'm going to hand over to uh, Avinash, who's going to bring more exciting use cases and examples. Hi, I'm Avinash Panga. I'm here from Google uh, to represent the work done by my team and my colleagues at Google. Thank you, Eric, for introducing the charter and talking about Rack Move Automation. Moving racks is a critical process at Google also, and we are looking forward to working with our OCP partners on implementing some of the solutions at Google also. Besides moving racks, we also have to move all the components that go into these racks. Google, uh, Google as well as other hyperscalers, use hundreds of thousands of servers and tens of millions of hard drives across our fleet. All this material has to land in our data center sites and has to pass through our large data center campuses every day. All these material usually comes in cardboard boxes of varying sizes. And we, as a, a group, are looking at automation solutions like conveyor belts and mobile robots to move all this material. And given that these cardboard boxes are not in standard shapes, it's very hard for us to design a standard automation solution. Additionally, cardboard boxes are very hard to automate and extract components for a robotic system. To overcome this challenge, we are proposing using of material transport containers which are standardized and interface with automation. Here is an example of a container used by Google and developed uh, in collaboration with Orbis Corporation. This container holds 20 hard drives and offers the same level of protection as uh, a standard shipping container. 20 of these containers can be stacked up in a pallet and can be transported using standard pallet shipping methods on planes as well as uh, road and trucks. This, this container also presents the hard drives in a very easy format for robots to grasp the hard drives with. And as you can see in the bottom right image, we are trying to share a spec on how a robot should interface with a disk, and we are trying to publish the spec along with OCP so that we can uh, 
let all the hard drive manufacturers know that this is supposed to be the automation interface area. This container also provides ergonomic handles for our human operators for cases when they have to pick and move these boxes. Uh, and most importantly, use of these containers allows us to remove a lot of cardboard from our data centers and work, us, work towards sustainability goals. Now let's talk about some opportunities of collaboration. Firstly, in order for RackMove uh, solutions or RackMove targets to be widely used, it is important that we standardize the spec for the interface between the equipment and the rack. So this means the touch points between the equipment and the rack, the load-bearing surfaces, as well as methods to strap the rack onto uh, the equipment. There is a huge demand for these rack targets, and we are talking about hundreds per year. So we would like to publish specs about this uh, in the industry, and we want to enable an ecosystem of vendors to design and manufacture these equipment at a competitive price. All these equipment, robots, as well as uh, you know, other systems have to transport or have to pass through our data center aisles, doorways, as well as elevators. So it is very important for us uh, hyperscalers to come together and publish a spec of these dimensions of these doors as well as the size of the elevators so that the equipment vendors can design to meet those specs and the equipment can be used across all our data centers. And thirdly, we did talk about the automation container. We would like to share the details about the container with the rest of the OCP partners and work with Orbis to develop a standard container that can be used across all the hyperscalers. We would also like to encourage the hard drive vendors to start using these shipping containers to ship hard drives from their facilities to hyperscaler sites so that we can remove cardboard from that part of the supply chain also. Now let's talk about some opportunities in the media management space. As I previously mentioned, hyperscalers use tens of millions of hard drives. And as we upgrade and repair our fleet, every year about millions of hard drives come out of circulation. And we are responsible for end of life management of these drives. That means we have to clean these drives, which means erasing them. We have to sort through these drives. And we also have to determine which drives are clean and have to, can be shipped for reuse. And in some cases, we have to go ahead and destroy these drives using some kind of a shredding or a deforming technique. Currently, we have different methods and security standards for these processes. And it's a good opportunity for us to align and publish the specs for that. And given the number of disks we handle, like we're talking about hundreds per day at a site, or thousands per day at a site, this is a great opportunity to integrate automation and robotics. I just want to highlight that it's very important for us to capture, or to maintain a tight chain of custody on these disks. That means we have to regularly take pictures of these drives, scan the barcodes, and upload into our systems to make sure that we know exactly where the drive is at a given point of time. This is a great opportunity for automation. And here is an example of a disk auditing system used by Meta on the left side. In some cases, we actually have to go ahead and destroy the disk. And we end up destroying all the material inside the disk. We saw the opportunity that there is a possibility to extract some of the high value components out of these drives. So Google had designed a semi-automated line to disassemble a disk and extract high value components like uh, rare earth magnets out of these disks and ship them back to the disk vendors for reuse in new disks that are being manufactured. The layout of the machine is shown on the right side. Use of this kind of a system allows us to achieve some kind of a uh, disk recirculatory program and also help us be more sustainable and reduce our dependence on supply chain shortages of rare earth magnets. Okay, cool. So jumping on to some quick opportunities in media management space. Uh, I just want to, again, highlight that it's very important for us to uh, align on uh, data handling, data security, and material tracking requirements. And we would like to work on this topic on the work stream and publish some joint standards. And secondly, I really want to make sure that we emphasize that we want to expand the use of the disk, uh, the disk recycling program. So we would like to work with some hard drive vendors to make sure that they are designing the hard drives with this plan in place, and they can reuse our parts. And we are also looking at a possibility of establishing a third-party vendor who can handle recycling needs for all of us. Now I'll pass it on to Shashank to take us to the finishing line, and then we can do questions. All right. Thank you, Avinash. Hello, everyone. My name is Shashank Gupta, and I'm fortunate to be representing Microsoft here for data center automation. 
big thanks to my colleague Zainab, who's right here in the audience, who's, who's driven a lot of this work, uh, and my colleagues Alex Kershaw, Ben Aver, and Nicholas Keen, who've done a lot of work for DC Automation, but they're not here today. As you see on this slide, you see light duty uh, vehicles up on the top and three uh, attempted versions of it. Microsoft has done it, Meta is doing it. And uh, clearly there is a need for a light duty vehicle in our colos to track noise, particulates, humidity, asset scanning. And that's one of the opportunities we're thinking of exploring further and asking the industry to develop solutions so we can scale faster. And these use cases are also evolving. What you see at the bottom is some of the things you've done already, but we have uh, noise as a new problem now with the GPU servers. So now we have to track that and make sure that our techs don't spend time more than X number of minutes in a colo because it's like jet engines running in the colo. So uh, clear opportunity uh, looks like a low hanging fruit. Uh, absolutely, we should explore this. So what you see here is there's work to be done on the hyperscaler side, not just the three of us, but other hyperscalers, uh, which is aligned on the spec for our data centers, aligned on the spec for the mobile platform, asset tagging spec, lighting for the colos, but also ask to the industry, if you have solutions out there today, please contact us so we can save the time to develop it ourselves and just get off the shelf solution and customize it. Now quickly moving on to the last section, which is manipulation. It's the, the stuff you see on the slide is a prototype that uh, one of my teammates, Nicholas Keen, developed several years ago, but it never scaled. And you can imagine why, because our servers are getting far too complex to do this work. I don't have an ask, or we don't have an ask to industry today, because the first thing we need to do together is to standardize and investigate the need for blind mate connections for network, power, and cooling. And I know we're making significant progress there, but uh, more work needs to be done there before we can come and ask for industry's help to, to automate this. Uh, so we'll do the spec writing, we'll do uh, the exploration here, and then next year we intend to come back here and with, a, with a concrete ask. Now to wrap up, uh, this slide is just a call for partnership. As we said before, we want to work with the industry experts, the robotics experts, to, to come partner with us, help us drive automation faster because without automation, I, we don't see a way to scale our data centers. We can't hire fast enough, we can't hire enough people, we can't make them work in heated environments long enough or noisy environments long enough to do this work, to, to keep our servers running at you know, high availability rate. So please contact us as this email ID and we have bi-weekly work group meetings. Please engage with us, reach out and uh, you know, let's make progress. Thank you. One quick comment though. Uh, Avinash, by accident, you mentioned that that picture was from Meda, but uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> the picture on the left is yeah. from Microsoft. Oh, it's not showing. <laughs> I didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody.